here I am at uh, about 10.46, about to take my first skydive, and uh, it's scheduled in about 45 minutes, probably about 11.30. This is a giant leap of faith, especially since I'm an uh, atheist, but uh, I've been looking forward to it with great trepidation. <laughs> And I am one of the many blessed artists that I got to work with Joe. Some of my favorite memories of Joe are the shows and the conversations that he attended as an audience member. Because the one thing you can say about Joe is that he loved his art. He loved theater. He loved attending and supporting the artists that he cared about. And he loved the messages. And those kind of conversations are gonna be the things that stay with me throughout my entire life. I adored him. I fought with him, <laughs> lovingly. And I will miss him and do miss him on a day-to-day -day basis. Love you, Joe. Very often, whenever I'm in my car and there's some crazy people on the road or whatever, I can never forget Joe calling me after he had seen a production that I was in and very complimentary you know about a lot of people and and the show itself and all of a sudden you hear him screaming and yelling and honking his horn and cursing at all the people on the road that were um, definitely doing something terribly wrong um, and I saved that message for a very long time. My favorite moment with Joe was actually first day of rehearsal in Kings. I was having a lot of trouble getting, you know, finding this character. And uh, he pulls me aside and he was like, Diana, my best Joe impression. I know this this uh, this character is a little more mature than what you normally play, but, but I cast you because I know you could do it. I know you could do it. This role is really good for you. So show me you could do it. And, um, it just really meant a lot to me to know that he really believed in me and, and, uh, and you know, it gave me the confidence to do the show. And then I was able to come back and do Watson, which is the last show that he directed. Uh, so I feel very fortunate uh, and I miss him very much. I think this story will speak to anybody who's ever done any play with Joe Adler anywhere. First day of rehearsal. You are kind of roaming around, you don't know what your blocking is. And in the script, in parentheses, it says, he sits, or character name, sits. So, you sit. This from Joe. What are you doing? Why, why are you sitting there? Well, it, it says right here, no, 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 stand up, walk around him, go over there. You don't have to sit. Okay, three, four pages later, there's something that happens in the dialogue that directly reflects the fact that that character needed to be seated the entire time. So you get to that, and the other character says something like, well, just cross your legs differently while you're sitting there. And there's a pause. And you look out at Joe, and he's like, yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. So the next time we do this, try sitting there. I still like it better where, you, where you're not sitting, but the next time we do this, try sitting and see what happens. There will never be another like him. I had a special ringtone on my phone just for Joe. It was the sound of a full-throated barking dog, so I always knew immediately it was Joe. Whatever the subject matter might have been, passion always drove the subject forward. And his passion always made me a captive listener because his passion made me feel as alive as he was. And I always felt honored that he deigned to share his passion with me, even as we had to precariously traverse the cell phone tower dead spots of City Beautiful, redial and remember for the life of us what he had been barking about. And that's why his ringtone was a barking dog and why he was a man's best friend.